China has made building structures an art form. Their passion for construction has given us mind-boggling infrastructure like the Great Wall, which stretches over 13,000 miles. The Three Gorges Dam, the largest dam in the world, is there to use the Yangtze River's enormous power. Their skyscrapers in Shanghai pierce the sky, creating a spectacle of glittering light and glass at night. Now, there's one project that sparked everyone's curiosity, Hot Go Dream World in Fushun. It was supposed to be an amusement park like no other. A fairy tale comes true, an epitome of entertainment and engineering. It was a dream, a wild dream, that was about to unfold. You are aware that dreams don't always turn out as expected. The dream world would be a direct competitor to Disney World. Entrepreneur Yan Jihi planned to construct it. He had some grand visions for the project, and it all started taking shape around 2007. A staggering $3.8 billion was the sum of money they intended to invest in this. Sounds like a lot, right? Let's not forget that he is China's seventh richest person. The amusement park would have stretched over a massive area of around 73 square kilometers. It's so big, you'd need a map to not get lost. They aim to make it a one-stop shop for thrilling and engaging activities. You name it, they plan to have it. It would have had seven theme parks, a golf course, and a shopping mall. They even plan to have luxury villas so tourists and locals could live there. Why did they want to make it so big? The goal was to make this region of China a hotspot for tourists, almost like the Disneyland of the East. This ambitious plan involved developing the area into a destination for entertainment, travel, and leisure. They anticipated that swarms of tourists worldwide would come to the park to take advantage of the excitement and entertainment it would provide. You're probably wondering why you haven't heard about this mega park before. That's because, sadly, it never came to be. Despite the grand plans and the millions poured into it, the project encountered a bunch of problems and eventually had to be abandoned. Such a pity, right? Seeing all those grand plans come to life would be fantastic. What made such a great idea fail, especially if the construction had already started? They ran into a ton of problems that held them back. They attempted to assemble a jigsaw puzzle, but certain pieces were simply not fitting. They started building it, but due to financial issues, the construction slowed down, like a car running out of petrol. They managed to partially open the park in 2013, showing off some of the rides and attractions. They even had some visitors coming in to enjoy what was available. However, their financial problems were like a mountain they couldn't climb. Even with all the ambition and planning, the project came to a halt, almost like a song paused midway. This meant that the rides and attractions, once buzzing with excitement and laughter, were left unfinished and silent. Now the thing is, these issues weren't just about the park itself. There were bigger things at play. Yan Jihi, the main sponsor funding the project, had to back out in 2012 because he ran into some money problems of his own. The trouble didn't stop there. Things escalated quickly when the world went through an economic recession. That hit them hard as well. With less money going around, people weren't traveling as much. So fewer tourists meant fewer visitors to the park, and that didn't help their situation. It eventually ended up becoming a ghost town. All those promising plans, the anticipation, and the excitement all turned into a symbol of a dream that couldn't quite make it to reality. What was so special about this park? What else was planned to be available there? Are some other mega projects still underway in China, or did they create an alternative theme park? Subscribe to our channel to watch out for news about more mega projects. There may be another pyramid under construction, so don't miss out. The major attractions of this park were to be two massive roller coasters built by the Swiss company Bollinger and Mabillard. One was a colossal hypercoaster over 66 meters tall and a whopping 1,666 meters long. Can you picture it? It feels like you're on top of a 20-story building and are rapidly descending. Not just that, they had a wing coaster as well, where riders are positioned on either side of the roller coaster track, making it look like they're soaring on wings. It would have been like walking straight into a storybook. They would have had lands based on different story genres, like fairy tales and adventure tales. They even had plans for a spooky, scary tales zone. They were also planning some wicked rides. The Banshee was going to be a thrilling inverted roller coaster, swinging you upside down through ghostly skies, and the Monster, an X-Car launch coaster with a non-inverting loop. It's kind of funny though that they moved the Gravity House to the Fairy Tales Zone. Their Glacier Racer ride in the Comic Tales section sounded like an icy blast. You would have spun down frosted rapids past hilarious bear-themed sights. 
It would have been the kind of ride where you're laughing one moment and screaming the next. What's a story without a little magic? In their fairy tales land, they were going to have the Magic River boat ride. You could sail through a fairy tale world filled with fantasy creatures. Too bad they had to change the Lost World Safari. You would have cruised in a boat through a land of adventure. But I guess driving around in safari jeeps isn't too bad. Maybe next time they'll bring back the boat idea. They've got a super cool attraction called Treasure Island Warships. It's a fresh take on the classic splash battle where you can fight from pirate ships. It's not just about attacking the other boats. You have to keep an eye out for those sneaky attacks from the shore too. What's great about it is that you're not stuck in one spot on the ship. You can move around the deck to dodge incoming fire like a real pirate. There would have been a witch's house as well. This would be different from your typical witch house as it was designed like those old tilt house or gravity house attractions where everything seems topsy-turvy. It would have mimicked like the haunted shack at Knott's Berry Farm or the mystery spot in Santa Cruz. Inside this witch's house, you'll find classic tricks from those famous attractions spread across the living room, kitchen, garden, garage, and even the bedroom. With these rides, Hot Go Dream World would have been a dream destination for thrill seekers. Roller coaster enthusiasts were bound and determined to experience the ride of their lives since the anticipation was so great. A place that was once buzzing with laughter and filled with excitement is now eerily quiet. It's almost as if someone pressed the mute button. Now, instead of the bright, inviting rides that were supposed to be there, you can only see half-finished structures. It's like a drawing half-erased. The rusting structures standing there tell a story of what could have been a world-class amusement park like Disneyland. It's equivalent to going to the movies, but only seeing the trailer and not the whole movie. The park was designed to be an exciting and adventurous setting where dreams might come true, but instead it stands as a dream that couldn't become reality. Despite the unfortunate ending of the story, there's an important lesson to be learned from Hot Go Dream World. It's a real-life example from a business class. It all comes down to how important it is to carefully plan and handle resources, especially when working on something this enormous. The people behind Hot Go Dream World had big dreams and even bigger potential for success. It was as if they were holding a golden ticket. That golden ticket slipped through their fingers because of circumstances they didn't see coming and issues with how they handled their money. It serves as a reminder that, especially when our objectives are as lofty as building an amusement park, we should always be prepared for unexpected obstacles and watchfully monitor our cash flow. Every time I think about Hot Go Dream World, I don't just think about a failed amusement park. It serves as a lesson, reminding us of the consequences when sufficient preparation does not support a brilliant idea. It highlights the importance of thorough groundwork to ensure success and avoid potential pitfalls. And don't you believe that's a lesson that's more valuable than any ride on a roller coaster?